We could honestly probably go and fight the lamb right now. You know what, dude? Eventually, maybe we have to just walk down there. We don't gotta kill that motherfucker. We're fine. All right. Oh, we gotta avoid portal though. Yeah, we're gonna go fight the. We're gonna go fight delirium. Welcome back, everyone, to the BD1P Binding of Isaac modded series. Today is going to be a tarnished Isaac run for win number six in episode number two hundred and sixty-one. I think. Anyways, your question for today, put your answer in the comments down below, is going to be, what is your favorite comedy, TV show, movie, comic book, whatever, what is your favorite uh, comedy medium? Let's get started. Your seed is going to be CYP1GAES. I'm ready to go. This character is very fun to me. So for a quick kind of uh, rundown of what this character does mechanically, it's pretty much just Tainted Isaac, but you have the added benefit of being able to re-roll the items uh, in your, your slots up here for the price of one heart container, or I think it also has a chance to add a broken heart, something like that. Pretty fun character overall. Uh, for my answer, fantastic, uh, great, fantastic, for my answer for today's question of the day, I, I've watched a lot of comedies recently, uh, most notably ones that are in the, the animated TV show format, and, and the one that I've watched most recently is a show called Bob's Burgers, which, if you have not watched Bob's Burgers, honestly, dude, it's pretty damn good. It's not my favorite over overall, but I, I think it's a pretty, pretty, pretty good show, it has some great jokes in there. Uh, the characters themselves are very lovable. It's a very just, like, it's a breath of fresh air to find a somewhat problematic family, but they at least, like, get along decently well. There's too many shows that I think delve into the family crisis that uh, focus too much on the family kind of hating each other or getting into arguments constantly, whereas Bob's Burgers is very much just a, like, go with the flow kind of show the the conflict at least in the early seasons from what i've seen so far the conflict comes from uh the outside rather than the inside which is is truly a very nice breath of fresh air for that show dude why is this floor like it's so big i haven't even seen a single special room yet i've seen what a couple of fool's gold rocks one tinted stony but literally not even a single shop item room secret room well there's our boss room thanks for that i guess but we are kind of running on empty right now. And of course, our item room was just one room off of our starting room as well. Great uh, pathing there, BD1P. That felt extremely fair, to be honest with you. That was honestly all on me. Uh, but I don't know. There's a couple of other shows out there that I think, in terms of just the, the comedy basis, really beat out Bob's Burgers. Voodoo Baby. Blocks projectile can create a dull razor effect on hit. After five triggers, the chances are moved to the next room. Okay. I mean, it seems to be pretty okay. I think what I would rather do, though, is roll that item in a better pool. Because we can use, like, any item that we want. Whether it be an item room or boss room or chest pool. And put it down in a secret room, per se. We could put it down in a, uh, a devil deal, angel deal, any of that stuff. So, we're going to try and take what is our, our trash, complete garbage, um item room items or boss room items and try to shape those into some actual power for us an early deep pockets would not be bad to have i kind of want both of these things to be honest with you but we're gonna need to find a secret room to make that happen i would be very ecstatic if it was right here huh all right i'm no longer ecstatic leave me alone there we go oh well <laughs> Uh, that, that's very nice. Can I roll the, the baby into Hemolacria? I appreciate that a lot. So now we have rock bottom Hemolacria, which is going to give us an insane fire rate. Plus, I believe if we can just give up every item we want now and keep the stats from that item. Holy shit. We're just going to fight the guy now. I, I really want to get both of them, though. Uh, you know what? It, it's the rare uh, bomb of this machine right here. Because now what we can do is we can buy deep pockets oh can we not get shop items no because we got that one oh i forgot about this okay so here's the thing is that when you pick up an item when you're when your blighted dice is broken it will instead just charge up the dice to its, its completed form so we actually cannot uh get deep pockets there my bad but in terms of just raw comedy one of my favorite shows, and this is just in general as well, is uh, King of the Hill. King of the Hill is this kind of like satirical 
uh, redneck type of comedy. I don't know how to explain King of the Hill properly. Well, the, the general plot of every episode is that there is this, this dad who lives in Texas. His name is Hank Hill, and he has a son named Bobby. Uh, a dog named Ladybird, a niece named Loran, I think. I, I forget her name, to be honest with you. Um, and a wife named Peggy. And it kind of just follows their life being super hardcore, like conservative rednecks, like Texas, Southern blood type of people. And the, the antics that take place in that show are just incredible. Okay, we're, we can actually roll this into oh no so it takes the pool the item was from gotcha uh that is actually not bad we can get money off of this and then if we really want to get a double charge and we can roll that money into i think i'd rather have the tier rate plus the hearts right now for stats and now we're gonna have yeah Devil Deal Protection, a higher tier. Well, not yet. We're going to get a higher tier rate eventually. But we're, we're kind of sitting really, really, really pretty right now. But to, I guess, give you guys a rundown of, of an episode of the show. Uh, the, the the first episode, the, the very first pilot part of King of the Hill. Uh, so the, the, the plot of this episode is that uh, Hank Hill, the dad, needs to get a new part for his car because his engine is dying or something like that. So he goes to the store with his son, Bobby, to help look for a new car part for himself. Actually, we might want to go for an angel deal here, so I'll do this. And while they're at the store, um, I think what happens here is that Bobby finds one of those, like, wrapping paper tubes and hits himself on the head on accident with it. And it sounds like Hank hit his son, which he obviously did not. So everyone in the town starts gossiping around and goes like, Ooh, holy mantle, don't mind if I do. Like... Oh, man, I... Oh, it doesn't work, because... I gotta pay attention more, man. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm real bad right now. Um, but th this rumor starts going around that Hank hits his son. And it, while it isn't true, it still makes Hank pretty mad to hear that. And somebody calls uh, social services on Hank and Bobby. And this little dweeby guy comes to his house and sees that Bobby has a bruise on his eye. And he's like, oh, my God, your dad must be hitting you. But Bobby, what actually happened is Bobby threw a baseball and it bounced off the wall and hit himself in the eye. And this guy is so hellbent on proving that Hank hits his son that he starts like going insane for it. And Hank gets even more ragey and mad and that doesn't really help his case too much. But it's just like, it doesn't sound very funny or appealing, but it, it, it's such a great satire on the, the Southern way of American living that it, it, it feels like at times, it's almost a self-parody of itself, and it makes it, like, twice as funny. I really cannot get over how good the show is. If you have, like, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes on your hands today, go on to HBO, go on to Hulu, look up King of the Hill, and g give the first episode a watch. You will not be disappointed. Uh, and there is an episode of that show that... Ah, uh, there's so many good ones, I can't pick just one. I guess if I had to try and pick one... There is an episode of the show where Loran gets a boyfriend who used to work at a corn chip factory. And this, for some reason, like, really interests Bobby. And Bobby wants to go and see where this guy used to work because the guy claims that you will never be a happier man than eating a corn chip fresh off the line. So this guy goes, we should, yeah, we'll take this. Um, and I guess we'll roll the HP into... Ow, you bitch. Um, I guess the speed up is good for rock bottom, but I, I like the idea of eyesore with hemolacria quite a bit. And we're going to actually bomb you for a key piece. But Bobby gets really invested in trying to go eat a corn chip fresh off the line from this guy's old place of work. And they spend the entire time trying to break into a factory just to eat a fresh corn chip. And it, it's, it's such an absurdly dumb premise, but in the context of this show, King of the Hill, it really, really works. And there are a couple other uh, side characters there as well. Uh, there's Dale, there's Boomenhauer, and then there's also, um, what's the other guy's name? Dale, Boomenhauer, and I, <laughs> I forget the, the bigger dude's name, but they all have their own, like, very unique personalities, and it all, like, really just translates so well into the, to the universe of this show that every single episode except for maybe the last season is kind of hit or miss for me personally but almost every single episode is a, a classic just 
perfect adventure in its own right. And I, I really can't get over it. We can get our first key piece here and have our full completed key piece on floor two. We can also go one more for seven soul hearts. Perfect. We could honestly probably go and fight the lamb right now. You know what, dude? We're going to go fight the lamb. We're going to do a victory lap. Trust me on this one. It's going to be insane. We're going to go down there, get a red portal right away. It's going to be everybody's favorite day. And if we lose, dude, I I'm dying with my honor on, like next to me. So watch this shit. We kill you. Eventually, maybe we, 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 we just walk down there. We don't got to kill that motherfucker. We're fine. We're fighting the lamb right now, dude. Red portal. Okay, it is not a red portal. That's a bit... Oh, we can fight Mega Satan, though. It's a bit scary. Um, okay. Interesting item picks here. I I'll take... Oh, we can't, right? Uh, I guess we'll buy Rotten Baby. And we'll go to our secret room right now. And we'll fight Greed, of course. It has to happen eventually, right? We could probably honestly beat the lamb right now and beat the entire floor out here. And then once we're done with that, do a victory lap and have extra items going forward. I don't, that, that premise does not sound too bad to me. It really doesn't. Now, where would the room be? I'm going to guess to my left. I was entirely wrong here. However, this is not that bad to see. Because I believe the steam cell might count as a secret room item. It does not. And we'll take Hive Mind for the uh, better Rotten Baby. Is the boss fight this way? It's not this way either. Okay, interesting. Oh! oh, 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 oh. What are the odds of that happening? Genuinely, what is the chance of me going over this dirt patch right here, popping my dead sea scrolls and having it be we need to go deeper? That is insane. Uh, that is actually crazy. It's got to be to our down and right. It's got, we gotta be close to it, man. Where could this boss room be? I found it. I found the lamp. We should have no trouble just beating the hell out of this guy, huh? We get some extra damage there. We can pop this and get Monstro's Tooth, okay? There we go, Sig Monstro. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are crushing this run. We're, we're 10 minutes in and we're already on the, the lamb fight. Uh, we are gonna go for a victory lap here. And then fight the entirety of the run over again. Maybe going back to land. Maybe going to, to the chest this time. I have no idea. The world is kind of our oyster right now. Just don't die this uh, late on into the fight. The body's dead. Perfect. The lamb should be okay. Hey, hello. Uh, lamb should be close behind. No brimstone that time. All right. Oh, we got a void portal, though. <laughs> we did get a void portal. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go fight the. We're gonna go fight delirium. Uh, we've only gone through three floors so far, but I'm not walking in that. No, thank you. We're gonna go fight delirium. We're gonna get. Watch me get just like an R key on this floor. It could happen, dude. We're gonna try our best to get an R key or just stomach our way through that fight it'll be fine guys trust me but in terms of like other comedies that i've watched and really enjoyed i would almost want to consider a show like kitchen nightmares to be a comedy i know it technically isn't but you watch that show for the the laughing value you are watching it true for to see gordon ramsay uh like spruce up at a very old and dying restaurant but I get more enjoyment watching the, the dumb owners get put in their place out of just sheer, I guess, humiliation and also hilarity. I, I watch Kitchen Nightmares and shows like that, and, and like especially MasterChef as well, for, for the funny moments, kind of, you know? I'm not really going to those shows and trying to, amazing pop, uh, trying to learn how to cook anything new or anything like that. It's mostly just for the, the comedy value. So. I'm going to consider, uh, subjectively in my eyes, Kitchen Nightmares and other shows like that to be comedy. They don't even hold a candle in my eyes to King of the Hill, but, uh, you know, it, it's worth mentioning for sure. Now, there is another phenomenon I want to talk about here uh, with comedy shows, and that's the idea that when a show is not marketed as being a comedy, it is twice as funny. If you're watching a show like, for example, Breaking Bad or even like The Walking Dead, and they crack a joke in that show... It's so much funnier because you don't see it coming. It's supposed to be a serious show or, like, a very heavy show. So when, it, when Rick Grimes, like, says a, a, a 
sex joke, you're like, oh man, that was actually kind of funny because it was out of the blue. Or when an ironic or stupid thing happens, you kind of go, man, that was pretty funny, wasn't it? Ooh, we have a card here. Yeah, sure, I'll pop Justice. We should actually be popping... Uh, we can lose Mr. Dolly now, and we can gain range or... I mean, the Soul Heart's very, very nice, so sure. Uh, but it, it, it's much less expected and therefore a lot funnier. Now, on the, the flip side of that, there is a show in that same vein that I think qualifies as not only being a comedy, but also is not marketed as being a comedy. But is obviously meant to be, like, comedy is a big part of the show. And that is, forgive me for talking about it so much recently, but Better Call Saul. The reason I love Better Call Saul so much is because of the character Jimmy McGill or Saul Goodman. I'm not going to give any spoilers here, but he always finds a way to make even the dullest situation enjoyable to watch or listen to. And it is, it's, it's admirable, truly. Like, you're not supposed to idolize Saul Goodman. He's supposed to be a bad guy. He, he's like a lawyer for drug dealers and murderers, but I don't know. His kind of charisma and the way he presents himself, it does strike me as almost like... I, I don't want to say I idolize it, but I really strive to kind of have that charisma at some point in my life. Golden key plus an eternal chest. Dude, sign me up. I can't read what that does. Thank you very much. Okay, actually, though, getting squeezy for the HP and the uh, potential background tears up is pretty good. Okay, I'm going to walk, or I'm going to go back to my secret room, I guess. And we're going to try to get rid of squeezy for... Ooh, Revenant's good, but Tech Point 5 with our current setup might be even better. <sighs> We're gonna go for Tech Point 5 here. I know it's the way lamer pick, but the, the thing is, is that Revenant requires you to charge it all the way up, and Tech Point 5 is infinite range and it doesn't have to charge it all. So, in terms of like straight offense here against Delirium on our fourth floor of the game, it's going to be very necessary, I think. All right, and we are now entering our first uh, optional boss fight, that being Satan. Great. I'll walk away. Good bomb. We definitely have the power. If we can kill the lamb with only two hits, we can kill any other boss in the game, I feel like. Uh, with a little bit of extra power, of course. And because Tainted Isaac only gets to have eight items, or Tarnished Isaac, excuse me, we're not really coming down here with that much less than we normally would have, if that makes sense. Like... We could only become so powerful as this character, and I think we've already kind of hit that benchmark in terms of raw power. Careful. Good. So, I I'm, I feel pretty good. A 10 damage Hemolacria with, like, a decent tier rate, that seems fine to me. And Sanguine Bond is kind of just, like, whatever. Uh, we can take it over, I guess, this? Oh, it'll charge back up our thing. Okay. Not that battle fight, our second boss as well right now, who is the gate. You should get on pretty easy. I mean, dude, we crush. Like, we, we do a decent amount of damage. We really do. What's our item here going to be? Brown nugget, huh? I really could not care less. Let's go to some more rooms, shall we? Poker chips. I'm saving you for a, a charge on our, our item down there. Uh, but here here's the plan, I think, right? We're going to try to roll... Uh, Rotten Baby next, because he will pull from the Devil Room pool. I hope. At least, that's my plan, at least, right? Okay. Uh, piercing shots are fine, I guess. Better than, than that guy for us. Okay, I mean, we could definitely be doing better. I won't say we, we shouldn't be doing better. Scratch card gives us absolutely nothing. All right. We'll do some more boss fights, then. Let's grab poker chips to get a charge back up, though, real quick first. All right, good. And now it's time to do some more rooms. All right, it's once again time for a boss fight. Here we go. Ooh, Isaac might be a bit of a, <laughs> a problem here. I really don't like fighting this boss, like, ever, but we'll give it a try. I wonder if piercing shots is actually bad to have, because we're not getting that initial, like, splash damage on the, the core enemy. I might have to give up piercing shots here if we get the option to. I don't think it's doing a lot for us, I'll be honest. It might be doing bad for us is, is the, the thing. But Isaac should be gone here pretty soon. We're doing all right. I mean, but the, the spread shots having piercing, though, is really good. We'll, we'll try and keep it for now. It just requires us to have a bit better aim than before. It's not a huge deal. 
All right, I'm, I'm a dumb idiot. That's my fault. And you're dead. Good. You give us... I, I will take 9 volt um, for right now. And we're going to give up card link next. We need to go deeper. We could have used it over a, a, a... What's it called? A floor decal would be a better place to use our thing now. But it's good to know at least. Uh, we have one more room to do for another charge. And we can go back to our secret room and try to pop some more stuff. Hard link will give us a shop item. Do we want a shop item or do we want something else? Because rock bottom becomes a secret room pool. However, rock bottom is the main thing keeping us powered right now. So what I'm going to do, honestly here, is we're going to first of all grab this. It's very, very good. Then we're going to go to here. And I think we're going to give up... Hive mind for okay. I like manuscript a lot. It's gonna give us uh, HP for popping cards, and those cards could also in turn give us even more HP. Very very nice. We have full HP. Okay, great. Uh, let's do some more rooms once again. Oh, actually, we don't want to have the voltage thing yet because we want our active item um, to get a one one more charge off first. That that's the issue, right? Is that if we are um, at half charge on our main active item, the, the full battery goes to our main and not our pocket. So now that we have a full charge, we can pick this back up again. And did we have an item in here? Okay, we can fix our blighted dice there. Very, very nice. And we'll go and fight our other boss over here. I mean, the run's going fairly well. Like, for a floor four delirium, I guess a floor two delirium technically, we definitely aren't doing bad. And that is very nice to see. Uh, okay, we're going back. We're going to go for another hop on this, which will give us backpack. Could be good. I'll, I'll try it out, sure. And then we're going to go fight our boss for real this time. Who's it going to be in here? Blue baby? The Forsaken. All right, that's going to be an easy one for us, for sure. No hits on the bony. No hits on the bony. Remember to just not pop your Dead Sea Scrolls. That would be not great. Consolation Prize. I mean, it, it's a permanent stat up, so we'll... I guess... Oh, no, it'll get deleted, though, real quick. Um, are you worth taking? You would be a tears up, I think. You know what? I'm going to use you for a, a half charge here. I'm fine with doing that, to be honest. And then we will, again, continue on with our current strategy. All right. Our last boss fight before the, the big man himself. And believe it or not, chat, I do have a plan for after we fight Delirium uh, to possibly get an R key. Because you can use your Blighted Dice um, by giving yourself Broken Hearts, I believe, what we can try to do is, once we actually beat Delirium, is try to roll Rock Bottom into an Arky. But I'm going to do a couple more rooms, and we'll be good to go on the fight, I believe. Okay, so I've beaten every room on the floor. All that's left to do is, I guess, just go fight the big man himself. Do I have any cards I can pop for a little bit of extra HP? The Chariot card's good to have for the boss fight. Is there anything else? Anything else? I think we're, 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 we're good just to go and fight. There is a half soul heart here for ourselves, but after that point, let's uh, just give it a, a damn shot, shall we? Hi, yi yi. What was the item up here? Okay. And the item in here was just... Okay, so we're for free to use our dead sea scrolls with pretty much no risk of losing out in any battery charges. All right. Ooh, pinking shears. That's really, really good. I'm going to wait for our, our proper time to chariot card and we're in super, super danger. But all we can do now is pray. All we can really do now is pray. Okay, get in there, chariot card. And pinking shears body. Okay, our charge is over. Hilarious. I mean, we're doing really good damage right now. We are. I, I'm, I'm surprised by that. Woo! Scary. Not seeing my, my actual body is, is throwing my, my, like, mind off where my hitbox actually is. It's kind of uh, a bad thing, to be honest with you, but as long as we're playing a little bit safe at all times, we should be okay. That was almost a telefrag and a half right there. First hit, it sucks. It's real bad. <laughs> real, real bad. Ow. 
Hit number two, that also kind of sucks. All right, hit number three, coming in in spades right now, huh? The boss fight's getting a little bit harder because we have this motherfucker down here still shooting tears at us, which we really can't avoid. The, the delirium lamb always leaves that carcass behind and it's not cool. Hey, you have a good chance to get some big hits in here. Nice. Little over halfway done. We're doing okay. The darkness is definitely not helping. Thank you, Lamb's body, for that. I really do appreciate it. Holy shit. Okay, yep, that was fair. You are just going wild, aren't you? You're still going wild, okay? This last, like, couple of hits is always is terrifying. The speed of what he attacks me at is just absurd. Alright, I walked just directly down into this tears there. That was a really brave move. Woo! Not another lamb's body, you prick. One's enough. <laughs> wow. Yep. Two lamb's bodies. Wow. That's our third one this fight. He's almost dead. It's not a big deal. Oh my god, watch out. Oh, now two fistulas as well. Two. Wait, are there two deliriums? What the fuck is happening? We won. That's all I care about is we, we won the fight. Okay, we have a couple more plays to make here, though, so hold on tight. Yep, all right, that's gonna be nothing for us there. Well, we tried our best. We actually won Delirium um, on, what was it? Oh, now you show up, huh? On uh, Floor 2 to Lamb to Delirium. That was, pr I'm pretty proud of that either way. If you enjoyed the run and my commentary, a like and a comment goes a long way for a smaller channel like mine. But hey, in the meantime, guys, I've been BD1P. Peace out and goodbye.